Hi folks, Matt Eaton here in the Wallace Collection and this is a messer. It might look at first sight like a longsword, but really technically it's a lung messer. Let's have a look at why it's a lung messer. Well first of all there's this style of the grip, okay? So let's look at the grip. It's very much a knife style grip with the rivets going through. It's got a pommel cap at the end but then it's got grip plates going down the side like a knife and then right here inside a d-guard is a nagel or nail which we characteristically get on the side of lang messers and also things like uh, ruggers as well it's got a long cross guard um, and it's got a finger ring which is a nice feature and also a d-guard on the side which provides yet more protection to the side of the hand when holding it there's no extra protection on, or there is a slight, there is a small bar on the inside that joins the finger ring. So there's like a mini D guard on the inside edge as well. And then if we come down to the blade, which of course is a very important part of deciding whether something is a, a sword or a, a messer, in this case, it's a, trying to get it to focus, there we go, it is a back sword blade. And you can see it's got triple fillers going all the way down. So it's essentially like a later back sword, almost like a sabre blade. Up to a Langmesser hilt. So there we go. Um, it is in the Wallace collection, next to various other types of longsword, including a Swiss sabre right there, which we'll look at in a minute. Um, but it is a formal, narrow, slender Langmesser. And just to expand on that, I have a, I think, well-founded and strong belief that actually the basis for um, later sabres and backswords that we get in Europe, in Western Europe, um, and indeed sabres in, in Eastern Europe, is indeed what we call commonly in HEMA, the Messer or the Lang Messer, um, which is obviously a related item to the knife version, which is sometimes known as the Rugger or the Bandware. Um, and um, it's very clear to me that there is a progression, there is a development from medieval messers and hangers um, into Renaissance what we would sometimes call falchions or sabres, um, and indeed hangers. Hangers stayed all the way through, and if we look at this example up on the wall here, so this is an early 18th century hanger. This is really just a development of the earlier messer, or lang messer as some people would call it. It's not a new weapon, it's a development of that weapon, it's an evolution of that weapon. And in many books you will read that the sabre was something that came from outside Europe and came into Europe, um, or at least came into Western Europe from Eastern Europe, and from Eastern Europe it had come from the Turks. I don't think this is really correct. I think the process is far more complicated than that, and actually, you know, much more um, uh, much more precise in, in how the different influences ended up in the weapons with, that we ended up later. The reason I'm holding this Indian basket hilted sword is because this is a European blade. It's almost certainly a German blade, and it's probably 17th or 18th century. And in fact, we can find 17th century um, Central European and Western European sabres and backswords that are essentially exactly like this. You'll notice this has triple fillers. In fact, it actually has quadruple fillers because it has an extra filler down at the back here. And these blades were made in huge numbers and exported to India, for example. We know from records from arsenals, that is um, armories, um, noble armories kept by great rulers, that there were huge stores of German blades in the 17th century. German blades were highly prized, or at least they were good quality in comparison to how much they afforded, how much they cost. Um, and so quite literally, these German blades were, um, you know, spread all over the world um, along trade routes that were able to import them because they were, a, you know, a good product for the price. So quite simply, when we look at these earlier Langmessers and then we see these kind of Renaissance era, era um, long sort of two-handed versions like the so-called Swiss Sabre, and when we see that then we start to see um, types of narrow falchion as they're often referred to, or indeed early Sabre come in, 
A lot of these actually are using the same blades. And uh, it's my absolute belief that yes, while in Britain, for example, in the 17th and 18th century, we had uh, back swords were very, very popular. A lot of them have exactly the same German type blades as these. They're just straight or curved. Some are straight or curved, but in cross section and manufacture, they're from the same place and they're made very similarly. So there we go. I, I think really just to say that as far as I'm concerned, sabers and backswords of say the 18th century are very much a direct evolution from earlier messers and indeed with influence from uh, central and eastern european sabers as well but remember those central and eastern european sabers very often used blades from germany so you find polish sabers with german blades um, and you find uh, heavy cavalry and palaches with German backsword blades. And then you find the same blades in India mounted onto basket hilts. And you find the same blades in Britain mounted onto Highland basket hilts. So this trade and this spread of German made single edged, particularly um, back edged, in other words, blades, some curved, some straight, spread from India to Spain to Scotland. Cheers, folks. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. We have extra videos on Patreon and you can follow us on Facebook.